Inequality today is significantly higher than it was a generation ago. Top income shares have been rising quite markedly over quite a long period, and that hasn't stopped. The key question to my mind is, what are we going to do about it? This year we're celebrating the 125th anniversary of the Economic Journal, one of the oldest economic journals in the world. What we really wanted to do with this anniversary issue was to celebrate the breadth and depth of topics that had been covered in the journal and the relevance they had to today's policy debate. Dalton's 1920 paper really was one of the first papers to provide an economic foundation to the analysis and measurement of inequality. Inequality is a really fundamental topic that underlies a lot of policy debate now around the developed and developing world, as highlighted by column inches in newspapers and by Thomas Piketty's recent book on measuring inequality in the modern world. In 1920, Hugh Dalton was best known as being Chancellor of the Exchequer and immediately after the war wrote a very important piece about how we measure inequality. And interestingly, no one really paid much attention to this article until the 1970s when I think inequality became once again an issue and people were able to ask, hmm, perhaps you ought to look at Dalton again. The important point was he saw economics as being not just a, a positive subject, but as Keynes called it, it, was, it, was, it is a moral science. If you hold particular values about distribution, then how should we translate those into measures that the government can apply and uh, use to analyse how the society is performing? When Dalton was writing in 1920, it was true that the top 1% incomes got a substantial share of total income. And that share then fell. It fell in, in, before the war and it fell particularly after the Second World War. And since 1979, the share has been rising and we're back certainly to sort of pre-war kind of levels of the share of the top 1% in total income. We have to ask, what do you mean by economic inequality? Economists have done a lot in the last probably two or three decades to clarify and provide evidence about this, that is, to actually put numbers on the different concepts. The next step has not really been discussed very much, that is, what exactly are people like President Obama or the head of the IMF, Christine Lagarde, going to do about it in the sense of what policy realistically can one think about? And that's what I've been working on in, in recent months. I think the key thing, in fact, is not to focus on taxes and transfers, but on what happens before that, on the incomes people get, what happens to them when they leave school and the jobs they get, uh, can get into, the pay they get the wealth they get from inheritance or other sources, all of these things determine, as it were, their, their start in life and what their incomes are before the government gets to work on taxes and transfers. So traditional measures of inequality since Dalton's time have looked at income and looked at the, the distribution from the poorest of the poor to the richest of the rich and what that looks like. But also among poor people, it's not only that they're income poor, but that they're socially excluded. They can't get a job, they don't have education or, or good housing. And it, so they are actually at the bottom not only of income distribution, but they may or may not be at the bottom of a lot of other distributions as well. And that affects their lives. A child who doesn't have access to education may be in a, also in a house that is in poor conditions and may also be in a neighborhood which is subject to violence or pollution. And so a multidimensional inequality measure, in a sense, just shines a light on a much wider range of activities and identifies whether the same people who might be on the lower end of the distribution in one variable are also there in other variables. Our goal is very much to be policy relevant, so to develop measures of poverty and inequality and welfare that actually do guide policymakers. So income inequality takes quite a while to reduce. Um, whereas multidimensional inequalities sometimes are much more responsive to policy. Well, inequality has been on all the headlines, but the, the key question to my mind is what are we going to do about it? And there has been less concrete in terms of proposals which we could realistically think of introducing to have a serious effect in helping people and providing a fairer society. Mm -hmm.